Welcome back. So this will be a overview or review uh, of my lathe. Now this is a Coronet Regent uh, from Record Power, and uh, now I had this machine for a little bit over, I believe, five months, and. Uh, so I want to just walk you through some of the features real quick and uh, talk to you about many good stuff about it and a few of the not so good stuff. So uh, every lathe has a bad and a good side so there is no point in uh, sugarcoat and said that uh, this is the perfect machine. So uh, this is a swivel head 18 inch swing uh, lathe uh, with two horsepower, um, inverter, uh, electronic speed, also reverse obviously. Um, uh, now the bed length that you can turn, I believe it's 620 mil, uh, and uh, the swing is like I said 18 inches. But once you swing this, and uh, you can put here the outrigger here. Uh, the big arm that goes like so and uh, you can turn up to one meter uh, of diameter so you can turn a tabletop if you want uh, now everything what I like about this lathe everything is cast iron so there is no steel uh, apart from obviously the handle the quill uh, the shaft and the spindle but so. any other component is cast iron, which reduces the vibrations. Now, uh, I'm average height, I'm uh, 180 centimeters, or that's uh, what, 6 feet, something like that. Uh, so I had to, there are adjustable feet that you can uh, put on, which the lathe comes on. But even on the lowest settings, it was too high for me. So what I did, I removed the, the foot and you can see it, maybe here, I'll try to zoom in. You can see a little tiny piece, little tiny piece of wood underneath, it's around 5 mil, something like that, 5-6 mil. Um, and uh, then I bolted down through the floor. Now, I do this for every lathe. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a bench top, it's with own legs, it gives, in my opinion, far more stability and uh, it's much more composed, let's say, and uh, uh, reduce the vibrations even more. So, the other uh, good thing uh, about it is everything is nicely operated, it has a self ejecting uh, uh, tailstock uh, thing. So if I unwind all the way in, you can take it out. So that's a nice feature to have. Uh, obviously, five year warranty that's from the factory. Um, everything uh, now, what I would like actually with this handle, it's just personal preference. I would like to like to have it a stop a pin here. So it's pretty much always in um, this position, unlocked, let's say. So it's much easier to pull it out, but it's not a big deal. Um, if you have a bed extension, then it will slide it all the way up and you don't have to remove it. Now, uh, regards uh, the locking mechanism, the cam locks, everything is probably maybe the best on the, on the market let's say in the industry it really is a nice feel to it and that goes for the banjo as well you have the really positive feel how much you grip it, how much you tighten it it's really nice and solid uh, same goes with these knobs as well um, these two rests are extremely well so I usually would like uh, for manufacturers to actually uh, provide the bigger and the smaller tool rest because this isn't uh, suitable for uh, every job so uh, but if you're turning on this side there is 
there is some harmonic but not much so it's really nicely made now as I'm here at the headstock um, uh, this is probably the maybe the best value for money I would say laid so I believe when I watch today on the price at uh, Toby Slovenia I believe it was uh, 200 300 um, sorry 2300 euros um, which for the for the money I don't think you can uh, have uh, this kind of lathe uh, from any other manufacturer so uh, two horsepower motor uh, one and a half kilowatts um, 18 inch swing for 2300 euro and uh, they do have uh, sales quite often so you can grab maybe a chuck as well or uh, just big discount uh, so so it's a um, pretty good value for money you get a lot of steel a lot of uh, weight now in terms of weight uh, it's 145 kilos um, now I would like to be a little bit more heavier that's maybe downside uh, but that's why I bolt it down to the floor and that maximize any vibration or minimize sorry minimize any vibrations and um, just get much better feel for the lead now as I was here at the tailstock um, you might notice this part here um, just grab the allen key so when I got the lead I'm not sure if it's just mine or not uh, it came all the way tightened I couldn't tighten anymore let's say uh, but still there was a gap here like this all the way around so what I've done I'll show you here conveniently I had in the same color as you can see this double-sided uh, tape So you can do this with one hand. So I have glued here around uh, as a gasket. Now it's not a big deal, but uh, they probably could have done this in the factory. And uh, I, now I did um, spoke with a salesperson for this region uh, for um, Europe uh, market uh, about this, and uh, I said. Uh, about this little problem and uh, he said they'll check if maybe there was a casting issue with the plastic or something but I'll deal with it like this and as you can see inside uh, there is zero dust virtually no dust inside uh, so that's the first thing that I had to do now, I forgot to show you here there is a safety switch and uh, yeah, I would like this to be like a uh, butterfly knob, something like that. There is a switch here, uh, you can see. So if the lid is open, you can't turn on the, the lid. Now as I tighten this, you'll see the light will come back on. Power will get back on to the lid. So, and now once I tighten the the lid, you can see it's pretty well sealed all the way around and no dust inside. Um, locking mechanism actually it's quite lovely, so you can put it like so and once it's locked, uh, you just pull this, if you want to unlock just pull it down, it has nice robust uh, quality feel to it. This side you have the uh, wheel, the spindle, the spindle. Uh, so that's pretty common, and uh, the big motor here. So, and uh, the control panel here. So, the lathe has, um, like on this middle pulley, the lathe has really much, uh, has a really nice torque value and uh, speed and um, I never stalled it and I've taken like uh, uh, 25 mil on the biggest uh, cut uh, that I did and uh, I'm not sure what wood, wood was it I believe walnut 
so uh, one inch cut I took a big heavy cut and it didn't stall uh, now I did have to bring down the feeding rate a bit but I managed to pull it through and uh, I'm, if I turn the uh, to the bigger torque uh, pulley then I will have obviously more torque but I like to have the speed as well so uh, you just have to find the compromise for you that works best for you um, so the the power on it is excellent it just uh, is supreme in that uh, in that way um, now those are all nice uh, features but obviously it's a real life so you would ha have uh, the features that are not so great like uh, I'll mention this part and uh, what I actually mentioned to record power as well and they said they will uh, work on it it uh, it has a fast start which is great so that's up to speed and that's great and that's now running at 1520 but uh, what I don't like um, and they said from record power that they will uh, try to fix this um, I mean it's an issue for me but uh, for most, most most people it wouldn't be an issue so it take takes a long time to to stop so when I press the I mean just to stop so it, it takes a while to to stop uh, now there is a trick where once you press this and uh, after that you uh, cut the switch here it d does stop quicker but th that's a nuance to to do every time so i don't do it and uh, i do turn on and switch off the late quite often especially on uh, boxes and stuff like that where i need to check the surface or shape or whatever so i would like to you know uh, stop it a little bit quicker now uh, on my previous lathe I could uh, stop it with my hand but uh, this one uh, not sure what the terminology would be but it's uh, connected uh, the spindle to the motor obviously and the motor doesn't like go into let's say neutral so you can stop the with your hand the, the spindle at the wheel here uh, this you, you cannot do uh, it's has it has too much torque and uh, just you wouldn't be able to now the other uh, thing that it's again it's an issue for me uh, is this extra step that I have to do to turn on the lathe so if I uh, switch it off then I have to do this if I want to turn it on back um, so like this Now you can start it on, you have to pull that uh, mushroom out and then you can start it again. Now you can use this to switch it off, but once again it's an extra click, extra step uh, if you pull it like so to turn it on back. So there is a nice feature. Uh, that I like, uh, probably other lathes have it, but uh, what I like on this one is, let's say I, I'm going into forward, the regular rotation, and I want to switch it, let's say, to send uh, the ball in the reverse, so I switch it off, while it's still stopping, I switch it into reverse, and while it's stopping, and now it's uh, coming into reverse on itself again into this procedure and now I'm not touching it and you'll see now it's going forward a simple knob maybe for reverse just a button like black button would be ideally I guess but this works okay so again, it does take a while to stop, maybe you've saw, seen it, in, somebody did notice in my videos uh, that I'm tapping the gouge while I wait, uh, wait to stop, but um, but that's minor issue, and again, it's 
uh, more to me issue to me because I'm like making a um, dozen of pieces at a, at a time and I need to be fast so um, like I said maybe a switch to like other lathes have it like from Stratos let's say the, where you can switch the fast start and stop and the regular stop and uh, start so so that's uh, pretty much it uh, so it's a nice big compact lathe uh, I really like it uh, but uh, I gotta say that uh, it's time to move on and uh, actually uh, start seeing other companies <laughs> let's say like that uh, so there is a new lathe coming in and uh, I don't have space currently for a second lathe so uh, but idea is to have uh, two lathes in the shop uh, so I can teach on one and uh, work on the other uh, so or switch the work uh, as well so you, this is probably the one of the last videos you'll see this lathe on so like I said it's a great lathe it's a nice compact size um, a lot of features for the for the money it's not expensive so it's really good uh, good value for money it's time to to mo move on from from this lathe and uh, ideally I would love to have two lathes in the shop uh, just because let's say if one goes bad or goes wrong something and has to be repaired or uh, whatever it's so nice not always nice to have another lathe as a backup or teaching lathe or something like that so there is that idea but currently uh, i have other things that i have to uh, sort out and the next thing is uh, which you'll see in the videos quite soon as well is upgrade the dust collection uh, because this is this is r rubbish pretty much so um yeah so once again uh i hope uh, my video uh, library of this lathe would uh, help out somebody in uh, choosing this size of lathe if they're on the market for it Oh, and uh, one thing about the new lathe, uh, which I forgot to mention, is it's actually going to surpri surprise you in size. And uh, you'll see what I mean when uh, when I do the unboxing video. So that will be quite interesting. Uh, all of the different setup and everything which I'll have to build, which I'll try to, to film if I uh, will have the time. So, um, yeah, uh, once again, great lathe. If you're on the market for this kind of and you have the budget uh, in this price range uh, I believe it's the cheapest of of the two horsepower motors lathes and this swing and everything uh, but it's great value for money and uh, you you're, you'll be happy with with this lathe with this purchase so